All right, thank you everybody for joining me for the Medical Minute. Today we're going to be going over sodium nitrate OD. Um, we had a case of this recently, and I just want to go over a few salient points about it. Unfortunately, this has become an increasing trend on how to commit suicide, and there are a bunch of online sites that actually explain people how to do this. Um, it's actually found mostly in fertilizers. Uh, it's actually, they originally found some Chilean salt, but you can also buy this online. And the most common case or scenario you're going to find is someone buying curing salt, which actually contains 6.25% of sodium nitrate. So they'll actually ingest this salt. So if you get a history like that, you need to really start thinking about moving the patient to the hospital rapidly. Because what it does, it actually oxidizes the heme iron, meaning the iron that's inside hemoglobin that plays a role in binding oxygen from an Fe2 plus to an Fe3 plus state. So it removes an electron. And what that really means, it impairs the delivery and exchange of oxygen to the tissues of the body because it's unable to carry any oxygen, but also unable to carry any CO2. And what this is called is methemoglobinemia. Essentially, it's a chemical asphyxiant and it affects all the organs that have a high oxygen dependence. So the two big ones are the heart and the brain. And that also explains why you have some of the symptoms that you do. Uh, you can have peripheral cyanosis, headache, skin flushing, hypotension, tachycardia, hypoxia, altered male status, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. That occurs very often with curing salt. So if someone has profuse diarrhea um, and they're saying they attempt to commit suicide, that should raise an alarm. Um, they can have a level of consciousness, that decreased level of consciousness, and they can have dysrhythmias and ultimately death. So what can we do about in the pre-hospital setting? Well, unfortunately, not much. It's a tough diagnosis to make, and what you need to really to treat it is you need something called methylene blue, which only hospitals have. Uh, really what we do in the pre-hospital environment is gonna be providing supportive care until you can get in there. But the most important thing you can do is give the ER staff a history that could potentially suggest uh, the poisoning. So if they took a substance, bring that bottle, bring that liquid, whatever is with you, just so the ER can figure out and contact poison control. Your job is to provide oxygen, manage the airway, keep the patient stable during that transport. And obviously, if you have any questions, give me a call. All right, everybody, that's the Medical Minute. I hope you're doing well, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Take care.